So I've got a coat of uh, sill on there. Everything's nice and dry. Drop it on. And just lightly, just lightly move it around like that, look. To settle it down. There was no gaskets on these. And remember we've cleaned the bolts out. So I'm just going to whiz these down with the impact gun. And then we'll talk everything down later. I don't like talking things, well, when there's no need because the bloody torque wrench gets on the bench and gets all messed up. Right. How many more is there? One more. One more. Where is it? Come on. There you are. So, we'll just sort of zip them down a little bit. It's a bad bolt is that one, that's been, uh, that's been damaged, let me go and get another one. Before we forget, and while this gearbox is like this position, we'll just get our punch and stalk that, stalk that nut over. There we go. That should do that. <clears throat> Maybe do a bit better with a blunt chisel, I would have thought. Yeah, how's this? That's better. It's caved it in a bit better now. <clears throat> right. Whilst that's dr when that's dry, then I'll talk it down because it'll just give it that extra push. So while I'm here on this end, I might as well replace the seal on here. Uh, the oil seal and then we'll put some silicone around here seal that up do the front seal and that's about it really well we might as well do it now eh? guns here <coughs> oh, there we go that's that off You're supposed to put a new nut on but I don't know anybody who actually does there's the old felt seal and there's a new one you can see the difference eh? but I'm gonna just soak it in oil a bit not me but there we go. we'll soak that in oil and let it stand a little bit whilst we get the seal out <coughs> You don't realise how many bits of tools and equipment you need to do all these jobs. Uh, there it is. Now, what we've got to do to get this seal off, we've got to take this this sort of dust cover off here first, but there you go. That's right. Now I'll put a slight ding in that, but oh. Tap it back out of here. Get under the seal. Oh, that, that didn't take much getting out, did it? That was hardly in at all. What the hell was that one? Gee, yes. uh, what we do also, we inspect here, make sure that's okay. Also the bolts, while we're at it we can just have a check at the bolts, these are 3 8 U and F. Um, if you ever want to replace these, uh, this is for the handbrake drum, all you do is undo this circlip and just change the bolt. That's kind of easy. The seals front and back are the same.
Yeah, these are nice sounds. Let's get it started. And then I have a piece of uh, exhaust pipe I knock them in with. There you go. Uh, the goes, it goes against the shoulder so there's nothing really to worry about. Now we'll put this little ring back on. We have to make sure that this little groove here is clean as well. Because the idea of this is that oil, if it leaks out, can leak out of here through a little trough and then through this little groove here and then it goes all over the floor instead of going over your shoes, like your brake shoes, not your own shoes. <coughs> That's that. Now those oil seals, I do believe, yes, today they seem to be coming pre-lubed. You see there's a little bit of grease in there. And that's all you need. So I'm going to just put a bit of oil on that, just to guide it. Same on the splines. There is no master spline or anything on these. Put that on like that. We take our felt washer. Like that. Put the nut on. Put the washer on and then put the nut on. And what we're going to do, like I say, we're going to torque all these lot down later. But for now I'm just going to spin it down. <coughs> Not quite like that. And my, uh, my stand's on its last legs unfortunately. <coughs> right. So we'll do the other side, we'll spin it round and do the other side. And... Uh, then we're about done, really. Hmm, interesting. The bolts on this front flange weren't looking too clever. So, to get them out, you simply just tap this uh, little dust shield off. It's not held on by much. Push the bolts out. Now those are just uh, regular graded bolts, but I put these uh, high tensile bolts and they're a little bit better. I should, I should put these in the shop because they're quite good. There we go, they look nice don't they? And then press that ring on and then we can fit it back so on. A few last things. Don't forget to tighten up the bolt for the bung. This one was loose. They put it in you know, finger tight but it's easy done. Just get in the habit of tightening them back up again when you're done. I like to say I'm going to go around, once the torque meter is set for all these 10mm headed bolts or these 8mm uh, diameter, 8mm uh, threaded bolts, we'll do them all at once. Uh, I've put the seal in for the uh, main shaft, so that's done. The next thing, perhaps the uh, Last thing of all is to do the cover for here. So what we're going to do is spin this off, put some silicone around it and then put the end cover on. Right, I put a little bit of silicone around here, some of the RTV sealer. <clears throat> Doesn't need a great bit, but I'll just usually just put it in the corner because that's sufficient. Then it's not squidging all over the place. Remember to put it on nice and even. Oh, look sharp for your gear. And also the cover. Now I did put a mark on this before I took it off. So that should be alright. Now before we fasten it all up, we'll just put all the bolts in the holes because these are, uh, as you probably found out, not symmetrical. You may have to just wiggle that around a bit. I think that's 
think that one there goes there because that's got the I think that's the one for the handbrake. Because this, this plate here isn't symmetrical. You'd think it would be, but it isn't. I don't know why they did it like that. Now there seems to be missing one bolt out. Oh, there it is. So I'm just going to whiz those down and then again we'll talk them up before the silicone dries. So, we're almost at an end on this. First of all we've got to do a few checks. Now, when you hear things like this, that clunky in a Land Rover diff, that's normal. Don't worry about it, you'll never get rid of it. So first of all what we're going to do, <coughs> we've got a 10mm key and we're going to check the diff lock. We've got our multimeter, set it to ohms. Right, that's okay, and put the diff lock in. And that, there, did you hear it click? So that's the diff lock in, and the switch should work, and it doesn't. What's wrong there? <laughs> See, it's showing me a layer, eh? Is that not working? <laughs> oh dear. Well, that's a diff lock in, and the switch says there's one test. We'll have to do another switch on that or adjust it somehow because there's a locking nut under there. That's that one. Diff lock out. That's good. Next thing, we get a pair of adjustables and we'll check the. Uh, that should be a neutral, and that should be, I think that's a tie range, I'm not sure, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's working fine. There we go. They need some new bushes in here. They're finished. So the next thing what we'll do, we'll fire up the old smoke machine. Wasn't me, that was the smoke machine. <coughs> there we go. Wait for a bit of smoke to come out. Now we're going to block the hole up. I haven't got any more, more plugs. Oh, hold on a minute. I haven't got any more plugs left, so I've got the old uh, bushing here and put a plug in the end. I'll have to get some more. And that's the best I can do, really. Ah, there, you see? We haven't got a bolt in here. Oh, no, it's that one. There you go. See the machine switched off? That's good. That's why you should put some sealer on the threads, you see. Right, finish with that test. So that's going to be oil tight. So all we've got to do now is work out why that diff lock light isn't working. There's so many little things you can test on the bench before you put them back in because it's nothing. Oh, it's really frustrating trying to put it back in and put it back in and then you find out uh, it doesn't work. I thought that was a good time though to tell you what I've been working on. These little kits here look. I don't want to get them too, too dirty. It's got the nut. Wait a minute here, come down here. It's a good, good, might as well have an advert on here. Got a nut, new clips, the uh, plastic bushings, two felt washers, 
This is for a LT230, LT77. It's got all the little copper washers that go on these on the breathers. Here. They're always missing. And uh, a plug for the uh, a sump plug and also a plug for the oil filter. That's for an LT77. And LT77 R328 uh, LT230. Uh, I've also got kits for um, R380s and, LT and LT230s when I can get it splutted out. But I haven't quite worked out a price yet. I only get a free sticker as well, that's good. But I find they're coming invaluable <laughs> for myself. I'm, I used to make these and put them on the shelf myself. So when I'm doing a job like this, I can just rush in and get them because you can guarantee the gasket set's got half the bits missing. Um, right, so what have we got to do? Oh, that switch, yeah, that's right. Let's test this switch. We put our uh, sounder on the, the contacts. The switch is kaput. Can't yeah, it's quite switch. common for these to go on. I must order some more because this is the last one I've got. I get through the I get through these like wildfire now. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm doing so many gearboxes. Please send some more switches. We need to take this this nut off here. And then uh, throw that in the scrap brass box. That's all they're good for. Put this nut on. Put the switch in. Size there. 15 millimeter. So that's not that's diff lock out. So that shouldn't be making a contact. Good. Now we're that ten and a half, isn't it? We'll put the diff lock in. There she is. Six in. Now with a bit of luck. Perfect. Just be careful when you put these connectors on, because these switches, they do work, but the contacts, you know, so I don't be pushing them like that, because they're only half assed held on. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, we can't put any oil in this one, so we're going to cover it with no oil stickers. And uh, that's it. So all we've done, we haven't sort of overhauled anything apart from changing the gear in here, but... It's, I hope it's shown you that you can't just change the gear and put the old shim in. It's best if you, you, know, you can work it out and calculate it, what the, um, what the shim is. So you put a small shim in first, work it out with your dial gauge, and then work out the distance plus two thousandths of an inch and you'll be home and dry. And that'll be a nice little gearbox. Don't let me forget to take this off here because this is mine. And um, what did I do with it? Then? God, I was going to have to get this bench turned. Oh, yeah. So, what I do for transport doesn't really matter, but I get a piece of plastic tube and put it over there, like that. And that can screw into there. And then you've got your put, you can see quite clearly that you've got new copper washers on there without damaging the copper washers. Isn't that sweet of me? <laughs> so that's it. That's going to be a, a nice transfer case. So tomorrow I can uh, put the bell housing cover on and get this pallet out of the way. Hurrah! And get my bench back. So I hope you like that. That was just a bit of a mess about, but um, you know, the transfer cases are quite easy to do just to reseal because they leak. They don't very much sort of leak from here. They leak from this threaded hole here. They leak from this o-ring here. They leak from that bolt there. 
They leak a bit from the seals here. Sometimes they leak from this shaft here. That's why we smoke tested it to see if it was going to come out of this uh, shaft. And same at the back. It leaks out the oil seal at the back. Other than that, they're not too bad. Amazing, isn't it, for Land Rover? See you later. Bye.